up guys, thanks so much for checking out the video. In today's video, we're gonna break down how the coolant system flows in Subaru vehicles. And then, I'm gonna walk you guys through how I modify one of these OEM cast thermostat housings to flow just a little bit better. Thanks so much for checking out the video guys. I'm Luke, this is a Subaru only show. This is my little Subaru only shop. It's a DIY Subaru channel. It's a channel where all I do is Subaru builds and race Subaru vehicles and more sport events. It's a DIY themed channel where I walk you guys through the steps to get your Subarus back on the road and hopefully do a little racing of your own. So thanks for checking out the video guys. I really appreciate it. Okay guys, I've drawn this figure on the whiteboard to break down how the coolant flows in Subaru vehicles. Now I know this is a simplified drawing and it doesn't capture every single coolant passage and coolant hose on the engine, but this definitely gives you a good breakdown and a good conceptual idea of how the coolant flows to these Subaru engines. So let's take a look at it and let's break this down. Okay, on the left side of the whiteboard is a radiator and on the right side is the engine. And in particular, I'm calling out the thermostat housing right here and the oil cooler right here. And what happens on these Subaru engines is that when the engine is cold, the thermostat is closed. And the thermostat is located right here in the thermostat housing, which is this piece right here that I'm gonna show you guys how to modify a little bit later in this video. So when the engine is cold, that thermostat is closed. And when the engine warms up to operating temperature, that thermostat will actually open up and allow the coolant to pass through it. Now when that thermostat opens up, that's when the cold coolant is gonna enter the engine. And I've actually drawn all the arrows for where that fresh cold coolant gets redirected once it gets into that engine. As you can see with these arrows, that fresh cold coolant gets redirected directly to the heads so it can start cooling those combustion chambers and flowing around those cylinder walls. And I'm showing that with this arrow right here for the left head, and then I'm showing that over here for the right head. But in addition to getting redirected to the heads, that fresh cold coolant also gets redirected to your oil cooler. And that's what I'm showing right here, the oil cooler. That oil cooler actually has fresh cold coolant that's circulating around it to cool and maintain a proper temperature for that oil. Once that coolant has circulated around the heads and around that oil cooler, it actually exits at the top right here where that coolant crossover pipe bolts down to the engine. And from the outlet of that coolant crossover pipe, it actually will go through a hose and into the top of the radiator where that hot coolant can get cooled by the fresh air that passes over the radiator face. And that's basically it in a nutshell. You take that fresh cold coolant and you put it right to the combustion chambers to cool the combustion chambers first because that's the primary area where you want to control knock and detonation so that the map on your engine's ECU will run properly. Now there's a couple other little miscellaneous hoses like a coolant hose to go to your idle air control valve and another coolant hose that's going to go to your throttle body. And that's actually an interesting fact that the coolant for these engines isn't solely used to keep the engine cold. That coolant is also used to keep other components like your idle air control valve and your throttle body up at the proper temperatures quicker. So that's it in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this thermostat housing and how I'm gonna modify it to remove some of the turbulence that's left over from the manufacturing process. It's a really quick, simple modification, but it definitely helps things and it can only provide better coolant flow through your entire engine. So let's check it out. Okay, now here's that cast OEM thermostat housing. And there's actually two areas that I'm gonna modify in this housing to improve the flow. And one of the first things you wanna think about is which way the coolant is actually flowing when this housing is bolted up to your engine. This thermostat housing actually bolts up over the thermostat to your engine pretty much like this. And the fresh cold coolant is actually flowing in this direction into the housing and then into the engine. So we wanna focus on increasing the volume and the velocity that the coolant can flow through this passage. Now I'll admit there's not going to be a whole lot of improvements we're going to be able to make with this and it's not going to be something we can test, but it is going to be a minor improvement and basically my theory is I like to massage every single part on these engines in a way that I know fundamentally improves the performance of that part or the performance of that engine. So the steps I'm going to go through, some might argue, aren't going to provide a huge benefit, but I don't think anybody can argue that the steps I'm going to go through do provide some kind of benefit. And if you go about building your engine with those fundamental principles where you massage every part so that it functions better, and I think at the end of the day, all those little modifications you did that improved the parts and the function of that engine are going to make that engine perform just a little bit better than it would have if you didn't do any of those modifications. There's a little ridge right here that's left over from the casting process. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove that little ridge with my Dremel tool and a sanding bit. Now the other part I'm gonna modify is a little bit harder to see on camera, but there's actually a bunch of uneven little ridges and bumps down here on the bottom of this surface. And this is a really important transition area where that coolant is gonna make this right angle and flow into the engine. So if you feel a bunch of ridges down here, you wanna go ahead and remove those little ridges so you provide a nice 
consistent, round, smooth surface for the coolant to flow through. Okay, and the last thing I'm gonna do, and this probably is very minor, but I'm actually just gonna polish out a little bit of the casting flash that's in here on the perimeter. There's a little bit of roughness, and while I'm in there with my Gremel tool and the sanding bit, I might as well smooth this out as well. Okay, let's throw it in the bench vise, and let's break out that Dremel tool, and let's get this thing started. Okay, to do this job, I'm actually using a Dremel tool with one of these little round sanding attachments. And then go ahead and sand off that ridge and smooth out that inner bore. Okay, after you've hit it with that Dremel tool and that sanding bit, go ahead and take a little bit of sanding paper and give it that fine polish to smooth it all the way. I'm gonna use a little 800 grit sandpaper. That should work just fine. I'll go ahead and go over all those areas really quickly that I just smoothed out with that Dremel tool. Okay, that looks really good. We've completely removed that little lip that was left over from the casting flash. We've also smoothed out the bottom here so there's no more of those little ridges and we'll have a little bit smoother flow over this section. And I've gone ahead and smoothed out the outer perimeter where there was also a little bit of roughness from that casting flash left over. So this thermostat housing is definitely going to flow just a little bit better than it was previously and I get to walk away knowing that I've improved the performance of this part and that this engine is going to be operating just a little bit better. Okay, now this thermostat housing is looking great and it's definitely gonna function great on my EJ205 motor. But I'll tell you, this thermostat housing modification is something you could do for any motor. It could be an NA motor, a naturally aspirated motor, it could be a turbo motor, or it could be a six cylinder motor. It doesn't really matter. Anytime you improve the flow through your thermostat housing, it's gonna improve the performance and the reliability of your Subaru. Now this thermostat housing is actually going on an engine that's part of an engine build series that I have up on the whiteboard behind me. This engine is from a 2005 WRX engine, also known as an EJ205. And as you can see on this whiteboard behind me, I've actually already done the first three steps. And that is to tear down the engine, to have those heads machined, so we have a totally flat surface to seal the combustion chamber. And in the last video, I completely cleaned that short block to make it look virtually new. Now the next video in this build series is gonna be to paint that intake manifold with a factory red crinkle coat finish. But I gotta wrap it up there for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comments section. I'm really enjoying connecting with all of you guys from all over the world. I'm Luke, this is the Super Only Show. Until next time, guys, later.